Well, the issue always was during the winter time. Because summer times, that w when we had to leave our place in this woman's house, she didn't want to hold us anymore after whole winter. So we start living in a forest, hiding in a forest. But the winters were the worst because it's cold. She decided that we have to start walking in different villages and see if somebody will take us. But she always told us we're going to walk, but only at night, late in the evening, never daytime, never daytime. So when we got, we walked, we saw uh, one farmer here, one farmer there, you know. And so when she stopped, she said, okay, let me go here. But she says, you two sit here and wait for me. Don't move. Just sit and wait. So then when she walked in, depends how the farmer was talking, the conversation she had with him. She was making a judgment. Is it okay to stay or no? And what was it? When she talked to whoever it was, the man or the woman or together, when they said, oh, you by yourself? No, I have two kids. I will have to. Where are the kids? Oh, they're not here. Uh, if you take me, I go and I bring them. No problem. Go, bring the kids, and you stay with me. I take you right away. Don't be afraid. You have a safe place here. So she says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Walked out, came to us. Out, quick, out, out from here. And we run away from the house. Now, when a person, she walked in, and the person told her, well, I feel so sorry for you. With two kids, you, oh, you have to be in this condition. It's so tough for you, I know. I wish I could help you. But you know, I have to tell you the truth. I am afraid. Because if somebody would find out that I'm keeping you, you know what's going to happen. They kill you and me. The Germans are going to kill both of us. I'm so scared, I don't want it. I really don't want it. I wish I could. You want something to eat? I give you a piece of bread or something. So my mom starts crying. It's so cold. My kids are so tired. Why don't you take us for a few days or a week? Then I look around for some other place. I don't, I don't want you to take me for the whole winter. Just take me for a time being so we can kind of get ourselves together a little bit. So, okay, I take you for a week. So then she came and we went and we were sitting for a week. We behaved because we had already <laughs> experience in behaving, not talking, making sounds or anything. She made sure that it's quiet, behaving. So they saw that we not making noise, not making anything. So they said, okay, stay another week. But then we had to leave. And that's where it will start being again no good. Because if we left, we left in the evening. So now we had to stay all night in the field somewhere. It was too late to go to somebody. 
So we were sitting, some, she picked a little spot somewhere. They had bushes or trees out of the village and says, okay, we will stay here and wait for the next evening. So all night, all day, till the evening, we were sitting in this spot. There was snow, we were sitting in the snow. We were cold, freezing, plus we didn't have anything to eat. Just waiting for the evening to go and again have hope that somebody may take us in. If nobody took us after one or two places, then again without food, with being frozen almost, we had to sit again and wait for the next evening. It was horrible, but that's the way it was. And during the summer, was summer, oh, thanks God, it's summer. We can go back to the forest and live there. It was already a luxury. <laughs> she kind of keeping us a little occupied with something. So she took a hand and she started teaching us. One, two, three. So we knew more or less how to count. Uh, Sometimes uh, the alphabet, so she said by hand, A, you see, is this way. B is this way. So, and of course, when we, she was talking, of course, it was like quiet, not a word. No sound through the ear. We spoke Polish, only Polish. Well, when we got and we lived in the forest, mom knew that the only fruit, food we can get is get some items that grow in the forest and that are edible. Being a farmer's wife, she knew what is edible in the forest, what not. So she was telling us right in the beginning, all right, we're going to walk around and we're going to look if we can find some things to eat. And remember, when we come across something, I will make the decision if this is good to eat or oh, this is an item that it's a poison thing because they very similar sometimes, they grow. And if you don't recognize one from the other, you may eat something, you get sick and you may die. So pay attention and look whatever I tell you. So it will take a little time for you to learn, but you will learn. And that's how it was. Walked, came across mushrooms. Okay, those are good. Walk, you see, those no good. She felt she was comparing the good with the similar not good. And that's how we learned which one we could eat and which one not. And then we walked and we picked this and that's what we ate basically. That was our food. It was cold, uh, cool a little bit, uh, not a big deal. The worst part was sometimes rain. So we were sitting under a bush, some kind of, uh, or something, but still you got wet. We start crying, oh, it's cold, wet. Oh my mom, she had an answer for everything, and nice. <laughs> Wait, 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 don't cry, don't cry. It's raining today, but look at the sky. It's going to stop soon. And tomorrow is going to be a sunny day. You're going to see, it's going to be a sunny day. So we take the clothes, 
we hang them on a tree. They will dry out. You put it like a new clothes on you. Dry and it'll be fine. So today it's a little cold, so what? It's not a big deal. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry. For example, that's how she was handling the situation with a smile, positive, not screaming, yelling, or anything. Very nice, and that's it. We did meet some cousins in the forest. One time we met a group of people. There was the one time only we met the group of people, and there were a couple cousins there. When they saw us, oh, what are you doing here with your kids by yourself? How can you? Just with two of you? Yeah. Join us. Join us. Stay with us. And the other people, yeah, come in with us. You see, we have something to eat. The men go to a different village, they steal food. They bring and we have something to eat. What are you eating? Who is going to do that? So stay with us. Mom says, no way. I'm not staying in a big group of people. It's very easy for somebody to walk through the forest and notice 20-something people. And what are you going to do if they're going to go to the police and tell them? So why? No, 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 no. You stay if you want it. I know how to live here. I, I am comfortable. And that's it. And she walked away. And one day, we heard start hearing shootings. And then she, we heard machine gun. Mom says, no good. Machine gun is Germans. Police, Polish police doesn't have machine guns. They have rifles only. So the Germans are here. Let's run away from here, out from this location. It's very close somewhere here. <laughs> so she starts going towards the shooting. And two little kids, we don't understand what it is. Mom, mom. Not this way, the, the, the Germans are there. Let's go this way, away from them. He says, no. No, 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 no. You listen, and listen quick. We have to go. We have to go wherever they've been already. And they've been in the back of them. So we have to sneak through somehow and go wherever they've been. Because if they're going to come this direction, they're going to see that we sit here, somebody was here, and they're going to continue walking forward. And they will catch us. That's why we have to go behind them. Come on, took us by hands, quiet, not a word. Don't make any sound, whatever you see. And that's what we did, we walked, and it happened to be, we didn't know where they are, but while we were walking, there was a little path, and it was like a turning. And when we saw a German standing in the corner and looking around, so when he turned around and looking in this direction, was a little spot. She just grabbed us and we ran through this in the back of them. And then we just keep running in the forest. We went to a point that she felt that it's already comfortable to stop and be there. We were sitting there for hours. And then she says, let's go back in to our place and go through this location where they were. So we went slowly, quietly, when we got to the spot where we saw the soldiers, the German, we saw bodies. All the 20 something people were dead. Again, my mom, she figured out, 
she had the feeling this. This period of time was from 1942 to nine, beginning of 1945. Well, there's one of this winter which happened to be, I think it was already 1944, 19, for beginning 1944. So again, we walk from one place to another, farmers to winter to take us in, and we came into this farm, and he said, well, Again, positive way he was approaching this whole thing. And he says, if I'm going to take you, I have to make sure that nobody will suspect that I can hide anybody in this place. So I have to figure out something. Sorry, but if you can, then come back in a day or so and let me think. Of course we will. So again, we were waiting for this one day. So came in the evening, told them, we're here. He says, okay, let me show you what I thought. Takes us to a pigsty. And he says, you see, I dig here a little hole in it, make a space for you. But it's very shallow. I cannot go too deep here. So the only way for you to be in it is to lay down. You have to lay. You cannot sit. You cannot even stay. Forget it. You cannot even sit here. It's not deep enough. What do you think? Mom says, it's not a big deal. I don't have to say do anything. I can lay, they can lay. It's okay. Well, if you think you'll be comfortable like that, go in. So we stepped inside, lay down. He takes pieces of wood. He covers the top up. Then we hear he's throwing hay on top of this hole, on top of the woods there. Okay, but then we hear like something is jumping, what it was, the pigs on top of us. We got scared. We didn't know how strong the pieces of wood are. If they start jumping, maybe they break and they kill us right here. But it took a minute or so, but then they come down was quiet, and that's how we start living in this spot. Day and night, not walking out from there, just laying in this. It was tough. It was tough because besides uncomfortable that you have to lay, you cannot get up and straighten out or anything. But the nature calls that you have to do things. But there is no place to go anywhere. So my mom says, looks, looks, she says, I think it's enough room in this corner here. You see this little corner here. Why don't we take this corner and use for our needs? That's it. Okay. So you couldn't get up and walk to this corner because the person here and here, it's not far, but still, you have to get there. So while we were like rolling of, on top of the other to this place, we did whatever we need, go back to it, and live with this whole thing. And the bad part also, which was, that the pigs, when they start urine on top, some things 
was sitting in the hay, but a lot of them went through the hay and it started dripping on us. Ugh. It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't pleasant. In the beginning, we started crying and then complaining quietly, of course, but still, again, mom found a way to explain that this is not so horrible, it's not so bad, they're going to see this is not going to happen all the time. Once in a while it happens, it's bad, of course it is, but that's the way we live, and it will be fine. You're going to see it will be fine, whatever. So it was, but we had a place. We didn't sleep in the snow. We didn't freeze. We had food because he gave us everyday food because he made a little hole on the side so he could shove in a plate with food to us. Pick it up, and we ate, gave him back the plate, and then he had for the next time. It was borscht, you know what's borscht, and potato. Most of the time was borscht and potato. If we were lucky, sometimes he gave us a pierogi. Oh, it was a holiday. <laughs> we were almost a whole winter. When he, he let us out in the spring, he says, okay, get up. Go out, go. We couldn't stay, we couldn't straighten out. Our legs, our body was, oh. But slowly, slowly, we got back to ourselves. Um, honestly, we didn't keep in touch after with them. We did not keep in touch much. In the beginning, mom did a little, and then uh, it wasn't there. Uh, well, the way we found out what happened there, we were staying with them. They were very nice people. They helped us, very nice, very nice people. One day we weren't there anymore. We left there. They had a kid, one kid, which was a little underdeveloped, wasn't right. One day, somebody told them, told the, somebody told the police that they think there are Jews in this place. So they came, they looked, they searched, there's nobody there. And somehow they were walking away or something like that, and they asked him, did you see any Jews here, walking, going any place? So the guy, the, the father says, no, but the kid, he says, daddy, daddy, didn't we see the two and a half Jews walking? So the, the, the police, whatever, looks at him, what do you mean two and a half? Two and a half, don't tell me the kid, because he wasn't, Right, so they got mad that he's making a joke out of them. So they went and they killed both of them. 